The Broch of Bursey is a small tidal island off the northwest coast of Orkney's mainland. Many years ago, the Broch of Bursey would have been a promontory connected to the mainland. In Old Norse, Bursey describes an island only accessible by a narrow strip of land. Broch comes from the Norse word for a fort. The Broch of Bursey was seen as being easily defended, being protected by the sea and surrounding high cliffs. This corner of the mainland of Orkney was attractive to early inhabitants due to its fertile land and easy access to the sea. The island of Bursey is only accessible by foot at low tide. A modern concrete causeway has been constructed to make access easier. But beware, the causeway is covered by the sea at high tide. Visitors wishing to reach the island are advised to check the tides and weather well beforehand to avoid disappointment. It can be a long wait for the sea to retreat. The causeway is slippery when wet, so care is required crossing over. When you reach the island, a short set of steps takes you up into the historic Environment Scotland Broch of Bursey site. Although most of the ruins we see here today are Viking, or medieval, the first settlers on the island appear to have been the Picts in the 6th century. It has been suggested that there was a small Christian community here before the Pictish settlement was established, but there's no definite evidence of that. Despite occupying Bursi for nearly 300 years, few traces of the Pictish settlement remain. It would have been constructed with timber, which would soon have rotted. The later Viking occupation built over the Pictish village with stone and turf. These are the foundations that have been excavated and that are visible today. A small stone-lined Pictish well was found to the east of the medieval church. It's lined with stones from the beach. It could have provided a water supply for a nearby bronze workshop. It was round the area of the well that many fragments of broken moulds, crucibles and bronze plating were found. Some moulds could be dated as they had Pictish designs engraved on them. Valuable objects were being crafted on Bursi. Brooches, finger rings and dress pins all imply a wealthy Pictish community. Elsewhere in Scotland, Similar metal working is associated with the fortified residences of chieftains. For example, the Donad Hill Fort in Argyll being one. It's likely that the Broch of Bursey was also the seat of an important chieftain. A Pictish class one symbol stone was found broken in pieces outside the medieval kirkyard. This is now in the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh. A smaller replica of the stone has been erected in the kirkyard. 
class 1 stones are the earliest type of Pictish symbol stone. They date from the 6th century. They don't contain any Christian symbols and the symbols themselves are simply incised into the stone. They're not carved in relief like later Pictish stones. At the top of this stone are familiar Pictish symbols known as the mirror case and the crescent and V-rod. In the middle there is the Pictish beast or elephant which some people think represents a dolphin and below the beast is a very fine eagle. The bottom panel is interesting. It shows three marching warriors carrying spears, swords and shields. Perhaps the symbols at the top of the stone represent and identify the chieftain's clan or tribe. It's likely we'll never know as the Picts left no written records. Vikings settled on the Broch in the early 9th century. Their houses and barns were built on top of the existing Pictish settlement. These are the remains that are visible today. The layout can be confusing due to the building and rebuilding during the 300 years it was occupied by the Norse. It was a substantial settlement, part of which had already been lost to the sea before the site was excavated by archaeologists. The land on the Broch of Bursi is too small to support the Viking community on its own. There is archaeological evidence of a home farm and buildings on the mainland opposite the island. This is likely to have provided provisions for the settlement. Bones found by archaeologists suggest animals would have been raised, slaughtered and butchered on the mainland and the joints brought across to the Broch of Bursi community. Apart from domestic houses, several longhouses, barns, a blacksmith's workshop and possibly a sauna have been identified by archaeologists. The layman would probably have difficulty making sense of these structures without help from the notice boards erected by Historic Environment Scotland. The most obvious ruined building on the site is a small Romanesque church dating back to the 12th century dedicated to St Peter. Romanesque architecture is an architectural style of medieval Europe characterised by semicircular arches. There are the remains of stone benches for the congregation lining the walls as well as a semicircular apse at the east end. This kirk was a place of pilgrimage until the Middle Ages. Some of the ruins to the north of the kirk suggest that they may have formed part of a monastery. But if they did, the monastery was probably short-lived and may never have actually been completed. Until the 12th century and the construction of St Magnus Cathedral in Kirkwall, Bercy was the seat of ecclesiastic power for the rulers of Orkney. From then on, Bercy's standing waned and the Brock was gradually abandoned as Kirkwall grew in importance. Heading west uphill takes you to the Brock of Bursey's highest point, where there's a small lighthouse. 
It was designed by David Stevenson in 1925. It operates automatically, powered by solar panels and small wind turbines. Its commanding position high on the cliffs makes it visible for miles out to sea, protecting shipping from Orkney's rugged northwest coast. David Stevenson designed several other lighthouses, including the beautiful Rattray Head Lighthouse on the Aberdeenshire coast. The cliffs on the Broch are a breeding ground for many seabirds in spring and early summer. It's one of the best places on Orkney to get a close-up view of puffins. On the way back to the causeway, make sure to pass the spectacular Cove Geo. A geo is formed when the sea erodes a fault or weakness in a rock face, forming a sea cave. The roof of the cave eventually collapses, leaving a long, narrow, steep-sided cleft in the cliff. As the tide starts to come back in, even the council workmen have to pack up their tools and return to the mainland. There has been no overnight accommodation on the Broch of Bercy for several hundred years. Thank you.